just about becoming apprentices here. And uh, he said, well, it would be good if uh, you could come over and visit. So we borrowed some money and we made a trip to Europe. Uh, and the, the first place we went, of course, was to St. Ives. And uh, we met Bernard and we showed him examples of our work, which we'd brought along. And he took one look and he said, I'm sorry, we're full up. <laughs> And he, he was right. The work was terrible. It was really bad. Um, it was the best we could do at the time. And we said, well, do you mind if we come up to the pottery every day and at least learn what we can from observing the people working there and asking questions and generally making a nuisance of ourselves? And Bernard said, that was all right. And uh, <clears throat> so we did. We trudged up the Stenek and then at night back down the hill, you know. And as the end of our bed and breakfast reservation approached, Bernard said to us, he said, uh, we're firing the big kill. I'm sitting at kill watch and I'd like to talk to you more. Uh, so we thought that was wonderful. He, he, then he told us, my kill watch is from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we went down the hill and had a nap and trudged up the hill again about one o'clock. And uh, we uh, sat and talked with Bernard. And we talked from about one o'clock until about eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, and we didn't talk about pots. That was the wonderful thing. We talked about social things. We talked about governments. We talked about uh, uh, finances, and that, uh, everything except discussing pots. And evidently we said the right thing because he said, well, at the end of that, we, we had to leave. And he said, I've changed my mind and you can come back in a year's time. So we went back home and in a year's time, uh, we got on a boat and came over here. And uh, <coughs> Bernard, had been in America at the time we were ready to come back. Uh, he'd been in America on a lecture tour and we arranged that we should come back on the same boat. So we spent a wonderful seven days crossing the Atlantic. And as we approached Southampton, why Bernard said, well now, do you have a place to live? We said, no, we'll get a, a room somewhere in town and that, that's all we need. And he said, well, do you want to live with me? And that was the best thing that ever happened to us. Uh, because um, we, of course, said yes. And uh, uh, we lived with Bernard in, in the house uh, at the pottery there. Uh, and uh, it was wonderful because Bernard thought about pots about 24 hours a day, I think. And uh, he was always talking, very uh, vocal in the way in which he described pots and his thinking about pots. He was, he was marvelously articulate. And we also had the wonderful experience of meeting all of the people who knew Bernard. And he used to come to the house for uh, supper or something like that. Uh, ben Nicholson, Barbara Hepworth, Peter Lanyon, Terry Frost, uh, those were all people from the arts community here. Uh, they had nothing to do with pottery, but they were friends of Bernard's and, uh, and we, we met these people and, and uh, got to know them very well. Bernard also encouraged us to take what had been an empty loft above the showroom of the pottery and turn it into a painting studio, which we did. Because my wife was a painter. I, I thought I was a painter uh, still, uh, even though I was not, not, uh, not very good at painting. Um, but um, it was there that uh, uh, he also encouraged us uh, to work with some of the other painters in St. Ives. And uh, I taught them how to do silkscreen printing. 
uh, the, the outstanding one among the, the lot that I remember was Peter Lanyon, who unfortunately is uh, prematurely uh, dead due to an a accident in a, in a flying machine. But uh, uh, Peter just had a feel for this silk screen printing, and he had no fear of doing it uh, uh, in, a, in an awkward or, or different manner than what I was trying to uh, suggest was the proper way to make a silk screen print. And uh, one of the best of the prints that Peter made, I'll never forget, he printed about three colors on it uh, in, in turn. Uh, and uh, then he looked at the print and he didn't like it, so he took a, a rag with turpentine and washed the paper off. It left a marvelous impression on the paper, a colored impression over which he then, uh, when it dried, uh, silk screen of a very sharp little uh, in, uh, bit of drawing, and it was it was a, a beautiful print, uh, even even with the washed out mistake. I I would never have thought to do that, uh, but Peter was a, a a great free thinker. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for coming.